we'd like to concentrate for a little bit on that small country of Liberia, down on that western hump. We thank God for what he is doing there in all sections of the country. I was privileged to visit there during the month of January of this year, 1989. We're going to take you right into our national convention held in Greenville this year, and what a wonderful time we had. Greenville was the host church for the 1989 annual conference. Pastor Isaiah Doe and his wife Susan served as our hosts. She cooked for the missionaries two times a day, palm butter, greens, and pawpaw gravy on rice. It was sweet too much. Greenville City Hall was the convention site. Seating over a thousand people, it was a great place to hold the meetings. The day sessions were very well attended as delegates came from far and near for this once a year gathering. The Bible sessions and preaching were outstanding. There were times of prayer and seeking God. Choirs from the different areas filled the auditorium with their songs of praise. The evening services filled the hall. The closing Sunday service was packed to capacity. What a sight to see the altar fill that last service as men and women sought the Lord. The meetings were attended by such government officials as Senator and Mrs. Draper, who were members of the Fellowship Church in Monrovia. The conference brought out many old timers that I had not seen for nearly 40 years. Men still carrying on, preaching the gospel to their own people. National pastors came from far and near. It was convention time and suits were the order of the day in the 85 degree weather with its 95% humidity. A few of the old timers drew up a chair and wanted to talk to the man that had come from the States. They had never forgotten the missionaries that labored among them in years gone by. Brown George had served as my interpreter for some years. He was proud to introduce me to his two daughters that I had never met. You can't have a convention without killing a cow in Liberia. The price has soared to some $350 for such a critter. This was the gift of the host church to all the delegates. The man doing the cutting had no saw, but was an expert with the cutlass. Straight down the middle of the backbone, blow after blow, never missing the mark. The choir got the head and the one who got the tail was to furnish the cow at the next conference. The conference is over, and the people begin to depart from the meeting hall for the last time. If you were to listen closely, you could hear them still praying at the altar. The Liberians love color, reds, blues, purples, and so forth. But most of all, it is the shine in their face and the song in their heart that is never forgotten by the visitor. There were no Denny's or McDonald's uptown, so we stopped at the corner store for a Coke to cool our parched tongue. The missionaries rented the nearest hotel to the convention hall, not exactly like the Holiday Inn, but each family had their own room. There was, run there was running water if you could move quickly from the well to the house. It's time to pack up and go home. This load was going back to Sinu Bible Institute. I chose to ride with the truck. After all, what's a little more dust? The Honorable Oscar Quia, a member of the President's Cabinet, had come with his mother. I was invited to join them at a groundbreaking ceremony for a new church at Quia Town. This is the beginning of Quia Town, Oscar's residence, and school buildings are quite visible. Soon, 1,000 acres of coffee will be growing. A junior high and high school will be added. Over 1,000 people will build their houses here in this location. We were warmly greeted by Oscar Quia. His father's tomb in the foreground reminds me of the day his father placed the hand of his small son in our care. I named him Oscar after my own father. The walls of the school building are going up. Class will start this spring. Who will go and teach them? They are looking to our fellowship to assist them with their staff. They want a Christian high school to serve that area. 
Under the temporary brush arbor, Brother Quia makes his introductory remarks. As he has viewed the school system deteriorate in Monrovia, he pled with us to help bring instruction to his people that would profit them academically and spiritually. It was an emotional time for me, standing among a people Louise and I had said goodbye to in 1952. Now they were asking us to join with them in a venture to honor Christ in education. The enthusiastic crowd lifted their voices to God in song. This was a great day of jubilee. Once again, something great was going to happen in the Nimapu Boya area. As we prayed and turned the shovel of earth, our hearts rejoiced with theirs for the place God was to have in this school. We hereby dedicate this place unto God, that he might demonstrate to this people his divine presence. This church will be about 10 to 15 minutes drive from Sinu Bible Institute. Already students from SBI have been coming here to preach. In sweeping the crowd, I could not resist some of these who so faithfully assisted us in the very beginning of Guido Town Evangelistic Center, where training nationals and planting churches were our priorities. Brother Heinzig took a wide swing in our approach, which enabled me to catch Sinu Bible Institute in my lens. The campus looked beautiful next to the rubber trees. The Harmaton winds bringing the dust from the great Sierra Desert filled the air as I caught the morning sun coming up over the church and school building. This coming school term, they will add a two-year college level class. This will add prestige to the school and be a challenge to our staff. Monty holds up the plaque that had been rescued from the corner of the Bible School building. It was a memorial to brother and sister Salsness, the parents of my wife Louise. Reverend Osborne Arnes, now in Chicago, was the builder of the campus. This being the first residence on the top of the knoll, now housing the Fosters. Jerry and Chip Foster are members of the church by the side of the road. I found them the hard workers, bringing leadership and direction to the school. The second dwelling houses the Fritzlers from Marquette, Michigan. Brother Craig Fritzler and his wife are an important part of the teaching ministry staff at SBI. Last year, the third dwelling was finished up to make room for a young couple who wanted to serve a short term in Liberia. Brother and Sister Joe Pep are from Pastor Tim Keene's church in Chicago. They have returned home after serving a year with our staff at SBI. To help in the extra teaching load, Brother and Sister Frank have been asked to join the staff. Both of them are experienced teachers and well qualified for the challenge that awaits them. Brother Branch from another fellowship brought in a portable sawmill to assist our missionaries in securing plank for their next building program. First, the bark has to be taken off. The Woodweiser was a bandsaw, furnished through World Vision free of charge for work on the mission field. Secondly, you trim the edges. Then you just set the gauge and slice off whatever thickness you desire. What a machine. In fact, it would be nice to have one for our own mission stations. It is not difficult for the nationals to say thank you. They sacrificed dearly to bring such a gift to show their appreciation. Brown George came at the time of my farewell with just such an expression. Next to the airfield at Joarson sits the house that George Call built several years ago. Bob and June Watson now make it their residence left to direct the Jawarson Trade School when the Doug Stewarts return to the States, they carry on faithfully. The mechanics class was enthusiastic. They had ready answers to my questions. They were preparing themselves with a trade by which they could support their families, plus becoming a tithe payer in a local church. Fiona Fields taught the typing and business class. The students were eager to learn some boasted of their typing 40 words a minute. Bible is a part of the regular day of classes. 
Sister Watson carries this part of the curriculum. Several children remain in the phase out of the orphanage which Sister Eastburn has managed these many years. Next year, there will only be eight left to see through high school. Rice birds strip the palm branches as they take possessions of trees here and there. But Heinzig has taken up residence with a Methodist group a few minutes drive from the trade school. After cleaning out the air speed tube, we left for a flight into Barclayville. Missionaries in our gathering today will quickly recognize these old time national pastors, John, Zacchaeus, Peter, and Moses. Men like these have held a steady hand upon the work of God through the years. The high bush was beautiful flying from Jawarzen to Barclayville. Up front you see a little clearing which identifies the Barclayville station. Not the best field in the world, but what a blessing it is to have on an isolated mission station. A YRAM team had landed in Liberia. They were split up and some were sent down to Sister Reeves to help in evangelism. I am waiting for the opportunity to show this picture to Vern Reeves. My video will prove she can write it. 76 years old and going strong, all alone laboring there in Barclayville for the past seven years. John Erickson, out of Christian Hills Church in Chicago, comes in once in a while to help out. But we need a couple to stay in this place and reach the many villages that are awaiting the gospel. Monrovia has grown these last few years. It now spreads out over many miles. The Philadelphia Church is located in the center of this photo. The receiving station in Monrovia was a welcome sight. Having been widowed by an accident that killed her husband, Sister Billy Call labors on. It is largely by her efforts that the new churches are blooming in Monrovia. She is constantly teaching from one place to another. Co-worker Annette Scott from Hutchinson, Kansas, is no less active. Working along with Sister Call, she handles the business agent side of the operation, serving all of the missionaries down country. She is doing a terrific job. The shopping centers are just a bit different than Northgate, South Center, and SeaTac Mall. Vendors overflow the sidewalks, trying to peddle their goods. Cloth, garments, carved ivory, walking sticks, and many other items as well as foodstuff fill the many booths along the street. Monrovia has become a stronghold for the Liberian Christian Assemblies, starting here with the new Crewtown Church. Hundreds of young people from our fellowship churches have streamed into the capital city. Under the able ministry of Pastor Philip Tatwa, God is at work in this congregation. He serves as senior pastor in the Monrovia area and is greatly used of God. Preaching here is considered a privilege. Barnersville is our second location. The fellowship hall is packed out. They have been plastering the inside and outside of the building now stockpiling sand for the sanctuary addition. Pastor Russell Doe is highly considered in his ministry here. Iron Factory is another area that our churches have been praying about. Pastor Anthony Sacker has the footing and foundation ready for backfill. Finance is needed for the sand and concrete floor. All the blocks for the walls have been made. They are believing God for a miracle of supply. Wood camp under the able leadership of Pastor Julius Doe is moving ahead. Just a year ago, the church held its groundbreaking ceremony. Now on special occasions, the place has been packed out on temporary seating. About $10,000 are needed to finish off the building with furniture and finished floor. Some of our young people had a hand in this while on a short-term mission trip to Liberia. The future of the work in Liberia does not hinge on the missionary, but on young men of God, such as Pastor Russell Doe, the able pastor of the Barnersville congregation. And Matthew Cotton, who having just finished Bible college, is pioneering at another new location in the Monrovia area. And Anthony Socker, who with his wife, 
They're raising a congregation while holding meetings in a rented school building, waiting for finance to finish their church building. Robert Sadie, pastor and able preacher and teacher of the Word of God at SBI. And Julius Doe, who is a firebrand for Christ, ministering the Word without fear or favor. Already he is wondering what to do with the people that are coming to the services. And August Tia, the chief son from Barclayville, who is burdened to open a Bible training center among his own people. With the steady supporting hand of such men as Pastor Philip Tatwa, we're seeing great things happen in Liberia. There is an awakening to spiritual things. Men and women are getting saved, healed, and filled with the Spirit. And as the rice has come to harvest, so it is in the spiritual realm. It is time to reap in Liberia. It is time to harvest. Jesus said, Say not four months, for I say unto you, the fields are white already to harvest.
We are touring the facility here and Oscar has led the group down to a house, one of the buildings down the slope here. We are down to where his first school started. Now they're turning it into a living quarters as they are building another school building. Very nice inside. We're standing up the tomb side of Oscar's father. Brown Quia. He was the Paramount Chief Standard Bearer for so many years. He's laid to rest in this tomb. Okay, I got it, Oscar. We're at the location of the church to be built across the road from Oscar Quia's house. Here on this knoll, they have a brush arbor prepared. A large number of people have gathered. They're singing in the background. They have been holding church here every week already. Today is the groundbreaking for the new building, and we are privileged to be here at Quia Town in about one hour out of uh, Greenville, about 15 miles from SBI. It's a real privilege for us to be here today. Some of the dignitaries from the area are here. The Methodist bishop is here, and some other pastors, and a strong representation. Friends from Bell and uh, the Port of Saint Louis, Greenville. I'm one as well as I see you know, bring my wife, Parliament and Client Chiefs. Town Chiefs. Keep it with our wants about now. Elders. New Cabinet, Quan Blue. All the Mopo people, Wagya people, everybody getting here today. No, you clever, why I knew that one, you clever, but that was on the now. I welcome you. Oh, what are they? Oh, what are they? 
I am so much overwhelmed with special joy. God's word says, My word will not return unto me void. I remember some 30 odd years ago. One evening, my father took my hand to give me to Reverend Anderson. He said, this is your son. My father was a very hard disciplinary and liked to be children. <laughs> and when he introduced me to him too, he was like my own pa. They all like to be people. Amen. 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 Yes, the beating today. And some other training. And they make you to wake up soon in the morning, six o'clock. Seven o'clock to be in church. In the middle after church, by 8 o'clock, you must be in school. After o'clock, you are back to the house. To change your clothes. By one o'clock, to go to work. Five o'clock, you get back to the house. Seven o'clock to go back to church. This is a four days work. Four days work. Seven o'clock to go to 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 work. Seven o'clock to go even in government's work, I control an agency of government. But I'm at work 7.30 latest every day. That's the result of the beating. I am saying all of this to say a few number of significant things. When old man Eddie Kanswan was living, he said I would build a school in Diru Town. But first, I will build a church. Then, Reverend Doe, his father, Reverend Anderson, they joined to build a church. After the church, then the school. In this country today, there is so much student unrest. The role of student-teacher relationship has changed drastically. In the years past, it was the teachers disciplining the students, beating them. 
The role is reversed. It is the students now beating teachers in classrooms. Amen. 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 Students are, are burning down schoolhouses. Breaking down school buildings. The government today is perplexed. I confused. Articles, articles are appearing in newspapers. Making research as to why the problem. To me, the problem is this, or part of the problem is this. I remember in Sino High School, by 7.30, all of us go to the chapel. And we have a prayer meeting. So put the entire activities of the day in the hands of God. Nowadays, Prayers are forbidden. You see, mankind have been trying very hard to strengthen and strengthening this word. Organizations internationally have been built. <laughs> After World War II, there was a League of Nations. After World War I, League of Nations. <laughs> After World War II, the United Nations. Mankind's hope and desire is to build a good, stable society. We go down to the state of New York. Yes, this big, tall building. And people go there every day trying to seek peace. To seek international national civilities. But you know what they do at the United Nations? All of them come from every part of the world. Different religious backgrounds. <coughs> so when they gather, they don't pray. No, they don't pray. Buddhists, we don't pray. The Muslims, we don't pray. The Christians, we don't pray. Therefore, nobody prays. Yes, they are all over the world. Yes, they are all over the world. Yes, they are But you see, God made us for a purpose. Yes, they are all over the world. Yes, they are all over the world. First, to glorify Him. Yes, they are all over the world. Amen. Amen. So my own conviction is, the stick, the rod, the tatai. Christian training. Should be brought back into our classrooms in this country. I've, I've said this many times in Monrovia. So the purpose of our being here today 
All right, then, one time, I'll tell you why I'm to do It's to break ground for a church. All right, now, you're bad. You're blue, blue, you're so cross, sorry. Don't try yourself for that, you're so for. Where we are sitting here, it's a school. Where the grounds will be broken there? It's the church. It is my strong conviction. That the two institutions are inseparable. The child must be trained in the Christian manner and ways. Almost mission was built. They signed the Bible Institute. It's an exponent of Diru Town. But something that is of pity to all of us. I will read to Grace, please. <laughs> when Dido Town was built, all these old people you see here, they were carrying ice boxes, uh, uh, stoves, and other things for. Uh, some 40 years ago from today, from that time, besides the construction of SBI, there have been some degree of stagnation and expansion and growth of this work in the Mopo area. There is some reason why there has not been total growth and total expansion. Therefore, in your own weak ways, you made us to become fishermen. Mm. Amen. Amen. We say we want to help in our own good ways. Definitely want to help from the depth of our heart in our own good ways. But this place will be an integral part. We want all Diru Town to be remembered. I found people again to be remembered. This what this purpose is for. We want to build, first start with an elementary school. Then finally to continue building a high school up there. We cannot do this alone. We are just beginning. We are just beginning. 
We want this idea to be sold to our friends abroad, friends locally. When we leave mission after graduation from eighth grade in the past years, and you enter high school, the mission people say, oh, the man is in the world. But we are not trying to tie our people down that we can go above the 8th grade level. After 8th grade, the child's mind is just prone to anything. He is away. So when we go out there, we are swallowed by all of the denominations. The Baptists, the Episcopalians, all of the big churches, they swallow us. Because they have the facilities. Liberia has changed drastically. We want to follow that change. We want to grow like other Liberian institutions, religious institutions, political institutions. We want to grow. Here we are establishing an agricultural project. We are doing it to help us financially to also contribute to the work. That the role will not be giver, receiver. That will be together jointly. We are building a project. So all the Mapo people you see about this. They come just to tell you this. That they are happy you are alive. And uh, this time we know you can't fly that small plane anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But you can still be used as an instrument for this work. We want you to convey our message. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! That since 25 years, the church left Diru Town, the mission left Diru Town, we have been punished long enough. We want you just to look back once more. We want the Holy Spirit self to use you. Praise the Lord. Amen. What we are doing here, nobody seeks for glory. We 
nothing any man can do without the help of God. So do the little we're doing here, we've been praying for years about it. Remember 1981, we started even brushing up there to build. We, we, we carry sand from Monrovia ready to construct. But you remember what happened? It wasn't God's stand. It wasn't God's stand. So nothing can be done without his time, without his own inspiration and push. How I feel today to be among you. I did not know we would be here in this fashion before I came. I am overwhelmed with joy. The morning, the 16th of January, 1989. I'm standing right outside the main house on top of the little knoll at Sinu Bible Institute. We came in last night just before dark, got unloaded and squared away, had a fairly decent night of rest after talking for a few hours, of course. The boys are raking some of the leaves that have been falling off the trees uh, down there is the plant where the diesel is running this morning. And then we're zeroing in on the library building. You see it there. Uh, the progress has been slow because they had spent their time on another dwelling for a young couple that have been here for a year helping. And then, of course, in the background is the Sinu Bible Institute uh, building itself, the church, the, the school. And I see the palm trees. And you see this nice uh, tree here with the yellow flowers on it. That's kind of new to me. It looks very nice. The sun is kind of in front of me here, but I'm going to take a chance to shoot the, the church and school building from the library building. Sinu Bible Institute. The new library buildings come along fine, but they need to get hot and finish it. Mission really looks nice. I say Brother Foster and Brother Fissler have things looking in very good shape. And then we sweep around and we come down to the other missionary house where Brother and Sister Fissler live. That was built just a short time after. And so we've made kind of a half circle of the grounds here at Sinu Bible Institute. <clears throat> We're looking at the house where Brother and Sister Pepe have been living from uh, El Bethel in Chicago, Brother Tim Keene's church. They will be going home this next month. And they finished up this little house and they've been spending a year here before going back to school and hopefully coming back to the field. Then if I sweep from there down toward the 
old airplane hangar. And you'll see uh, Brother Foster there working on his truck, trailer. Going to make a run into Monrovia. That's the old airplane hangar. It is Tuesday. And we are just kind of walking the grounds, and I'm looking across the airfield to where they live at present. I suppose we'd call it the old George Call house. It's had several renovations, I suppose, and changes since it was originally built. Now it needs a new roof, but it's still holding up quite well. This little thing here, they call it a peace house. It's got seven corners, and they're going to beat down the floor good and smooth, and I suppose it'll be like the Indians on the North American continent. It'll be the place where they'll smoke the peace pipe. Not really. Okay, we're swinging around here. And this is where Sister Leona Fields lives. That's where Clifford Johnson lived prior. She keeps it up very well with the bamboo little uh, wall around it there with planting area. You see the papaya fruit growing. So she seems to be quite comfortable in the house. Next to Sister Fields' house is the little house that Bob is working on in his spare time, which he doesn't have any of. But it needs a little renovation yet inside and finishing off. Probably about $1,200 American will do it, and it'll be ready for living quarters. So we're sweeping now from the big house where the Watsons live over to where Sister Eastburn is living. At this time, she is beginning to phase out the orphanage, making some changes. So the next year from now, maybe see some changes here on the station. As for Peter Slaw lives up on the hill. Uh, this is the mechanics class here at the Juarzen Vocational School. Uh, they're just finished the uh, afternoon session. So the Watson there has been their instructor. <laughs> Now we can see right down into his heart. We'll know what's going on. I know now if everything is going to be fine. Well, you look great. How's school going? You like it? Yes. How many will graduate this next year? Everybody. Wow, we. You can fix every car in Sinu County. What do you like best about class? <laughs> What's best? <laughs> Plenty. Plenty, huh? <laughs> you can tune a motor now? You can tune it up? No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. You, you can change the spark plugs? Yes. yes. You can do that? Yes. And you can drain the oil? Yes. yes. And replace it? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. They can change the tires? Yes. Yeah. Oh. They took the tractor apart? Well, that's true. That's great. And it's running now. It's running. Yes. How many cylinders does a uh, four cycle have? Four cycle engine. Oh, some have six, eight. For true? Six, yeah. Is that right? Two, three. Two, three. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> four cycle engine can have one cylinder. Huh? Yes. Uh, well, we've just met with the student body there, the mechanics of the year. You see one of the airplane hangars. Behind there is the boys' dorm, and behind there, the kitchen. And this is, of course, one of their classrooms in front where we were standing. And there's Brother Watson himself walking down in front of the one of the machine shops. They've taken a hangar and fenced it in in front so it's secure. And it's made an excellent machine shop where they can work on motors and bring a car in there and tear it apart and put it back together again. And they're doing a tremendous job here at the trade school. Only we must have some help. And I trust somebody across America will come and help them do the work here of training nationals to uh, fill important positions in life 
and then also by their tithes and offerings being able to support a pastor in church somewhere. Amen. Looks good, Bob. If we pan on down a little bit further, we see the third hangar there with tractors and stuff in it. And then, of course, comes up the houses on the other side. Brother Watson just pulled up here with the little Toyota pickup truck. And then you see the Toyota station wagon that they have a land cruiser. Tremendous vehicle for this part of the woods here. Very durable. Vehicles look good, Bob. Thank you. Those two serve you quite well? Very well. We've had uh, very good fortune with them. How old are they? Well, uh, the pickup is a 1982. Uh -huh. The Land Cruiser is a uh, 1986. Uh -huh. Mr. Stewart bought that uh, in Monrovia when we were here on the first uh, school that we had. And this one I brought when I came back from the States the uh -huh. last time. You find the Toyota really holds up well here? Uh, we found that, and we find that the majority of the uh, the trucks around our Toyota mm -hmm. in this part of the country. Uh -huh. So we're we're very pleased with them, and we hope that if we keep them up, that they will last us a long time. Uh -huh. That's Paul. Man, oh man! You can hear them chirping away. These are the children she's been looking after. Boys and girls mixed. She's raised them like a family. About eight of them have come with her from Dudwickon Mission. How about stepping out in the light, Dorothy? Yeah. Things are breaking up here now, uh, this year and next year. How about uh, raising one song? A chorus or something? This is Wednesday morning, and this is the Bible class. We've just finished session. Fine group of young people here that meet to study the word of the Lord. You can move around a little bit because it's not a still picture, okay? It's great. 
Praise the Lord. Sister June Watson there in the rear teaches the class each Sunday morning. These are those who are in the trade school in one class or another. Some are, will be mechanics. Some will be secretaries and bookkeepers. But first, they will study the word of the Lord. And they will begin to understand what God says, what demands God makes on their life and soul. Hallelujah. So we had a great time in class this morning studying God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Leona Fields has stepped into the picture. She has this class next for math. And then they break up into bookkeeping and mechanics class. So these are the students in the trade school this year. And they have their math book out already. Uh, they're going to study. <laughs> what are you dealing with, Sister Fields, now in class on math? Percentages. 10%, 15%, 20%. So I suppose you can deal with tithing there, it's 10%. Amen. Okay, that's great. Anything you want to say in the film? <laughs> what do you think of the school, okay? How many expect to graduate? Oh, Everybody. All of us. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Amen. A little bit now, and this is the smaller class. And what do you teach with these, Sister Fields? These students here are in the business section, and we have typing and uh, accounting and business English that we have now. Later, we will be having. Um, this office procedures and uh, office machines that we will be teaching the second year. Um, but they're doing great. Uh, most of them, I don't think they have seen a typewriter when they came or not to type on it anyway. And they're really doing good. I think uh, they will do well in their office work. How many words a minute do they type now? What do you type? <laughs> I type nearly 50. Wow, that's he good. He had a little experience ahead of time. He was the one that had experience. But these here, I don't think they had any experience, and they're up to 40 words per minute. That's great. So we're uh, hoping that they will pass the 60 mark before they leave. That's wonderful. Bud Heinzig has come into the Jawarzen field to uh, pick us up and take us to Barclayville for a couple of hours. Taxiing up the field. He may take her off, he may not. The in, uh, speed indicator was plugged up. Some mudworm had gotten in it. Second, I'm asking the minister to pray for me. Where's the other? I will meet her someday. 
our contact search. Uh, but just now, oh, there's a man who belongs to every country in the world. See how we are blessed. And God sent him uh, just petition him if he could come and speak to us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Joshua for Anderson is here this morning. He brought the word of God to us. Who has come down to fill our hearts and lives. And we return praise unto our God. I heard your pastor preach about Jesus. And that message has been burning in my heart. What else is there to preach about? Because we can go through the Bible and we find all things about Jesus. He is the one that came to save us. He is the one that came to die on the cross for us. And he will come again. And he will take us unto himself. Oh, hallelujah. It's Jesus we come to magnify. It is Jesus we come to lift up. It is Jesus we come to honor. It is Jesus we come to worship. His name is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We praise you. We worship you. We love you. Jesus. Because of what you are to us. As they stand in you. Compared to the people that are here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They yes. have to be coming to follow you, to obey you, to see you. Good morning service at full house in there. People have come outside, standing here with us in front of the church. Nice crowd today. A joy for us to be here and minister the word of the Lord. Where's Pastor Philip? Praise the Lord. Amen. Russell Doe is at Barnersville. Not much accomplished since I was here last time, about this same time. He has traveled in the States and has received several thousands of dollars for for his sanctuary here, and I imagine they will get started on it very soon. Over to this side, you see they have begun to stockpile sand, so they could be making their concrete block and their foundation for the sanctuary building itself. It's the 24th of January, and the Honorable Oscar Quia has come with his mother to see us, where Sister Call lives, and it is a real joy to see her again with her son. What a tremendous job she has done to mother such a fine man. So we are grateful to the Lord for bringing him into the world and also for his faithfulness to God in walking with the Lord and serving him all these years. It's a joy that I can meet with them this morning here in Liberia. It's moving, so you don't need to be so still, okay? Are you there, Billy? Okay. 